back live inside Studio 10. Holly Sin, Jerome Ritchie. It's Monday. That means it's time for a segment we like to call On Your Health. It's our chance to discuss important medical and health topics with the doctors of Florida Medical Clinic, the Bay Area's first clinic to merge both primary care physicians and specialists all under one roof. And today we welcome Dr. Steven Ratterman, an orthopedic surgeon who's going to tell us about the latest advancements in hip and knee resurfacing and replacement. Welcome, Dr. Ratterman. Good morning. Thank you. You were telling us your friends call you, call you rads? Rat. Rat. Oh, yes. rat. Well, I, we don't want to call you rat. I, I've been called worse. <laughs> All right. Dr. Rat. Tell, tell us about how convenient is it for patients, for people who, who come into FMC, when you've got so many different types of doctors there under one roof. That, that works out great for everybody, doesn't it? I mean, I think that's one of the things that actually drew me to the clinic was the team of the doctors that I work with. When I first interviewed, I mean, it was sort of a, a get to know everybody, and I realized, A, the part that I knew was a small part of it, and that the rest of the clinic was huge, and there were really, really good doctors throughout. And as orthopedic care has evolved, it's become much more integrated as part of a team outlook look with therapists and hand therapists and uh, spine procedures and spine doctors as well as uh, rheumatology and all that was with Florida Medical Clinic right from the start so it was a great team right from the right from the start. Now there is a procedure that you're going to tell us about today Dr. Ratterman for which you are one of only two doctors in the United States that really pioneered this and, and put this into practice uh, having to do with the hip but before we get to that what was the traditional treatment for hip issues. Did you just go immediately to replacement in the past? Well, the hip was sort of the forgotten stepchild of joint replacements. There were advances in knees and shoulders and, and new things coming about, but the hip was sort of a forgotten guy there. And um, the only thing you could really do for a patient who had a bad hip was a hip replacement. And that involved basically, as your hip wore out, you started to have wear areas on the inside of your hip. Tell you what, doctor, hold that right up to uh, camera one right there and mm -hmm. show everybody, turn that to, that you've brought an example of what a bad hip this is like. frightening right here. Is this just wearing away of bone? So the hip rarely would wear totally symmetrically. So you would see some parts of the hip that still look fairly good here, but yet other parts would start to show wear at an early age. And so the only thing you could really do is say, look, you just have to deal with this until you can't live with it anymore and crawl back into the office and mm -hmm. we'll try to do a, a regular hip replacement. That operation is a great operation if you're 75 and you're not very active. But as we've gotten older, people are staying more active. We have started to see a higher rate of hip uh, problems in younger age patients. And so this operation basically consisted of removing the degenerative part of the socket. And then you would have a new socket put in like so. And that's mm -hmm. made, what is that, Teflon or titanium? This is like is a, a Teflon sort of a plastic with okay. a titanium shell. All right. And then on the other side of the hip, uh -oh. not quite like that, yeah. you would re simply you remove the ball. And you would put a titanium peg in. And if your hip does pop out that easy, you really do need to you see need the doctor. You need to see Dr. Ratterman. You have yeah. a whole other problem. <laughs> and it would, it would come together just like so. Okay. And that would be a regular hip replacement. And the problem is, is that the plastic would wear out. You would start to lose bone uh -huh. in the proximal or the, or the top half of the femur. And you're right back to square one then. And, and then the you're back. Is, the joint ball is smaller too. It's a fairly small size ball, which was done to eliminate the wear on the plastic. Mm -hmm. But the price of uh, having a low wear hip was having a hip that would come out of the socket fairly easily. Ooh. So if you were an active patient, oh. that really wasn't the best of worlds. So you, you're doing this thing now, Holly was saying, uh, you, you resurface the hips. You were one of the first two doctors in the country to, to use this technique. Is it is it faster? Is it better? Tell, what's the difference basically between the resurfacing and the replacement? Well, the, the replacement is still a great operation if you are an older patient, not very active. But if you are a very active person or you are cursed with hip arthritis at a young yeah. age, then the resurfacing comes into play. And, and what this basically means is that instead of removing all of this bone and putting a titanium peg in, you'd simply put a metal cap on top of the ball that you already have, and it preserves all the bone. Okay. Like so. So all this bone here is now preserved. So what we're seeing, this that you showed us to start with, and Dr. Ratterman, this, this goes on top of this? Yes. Okay. This metal cap fits on top of the bone that you already have. Okay. And then that just... And it's also the same size as what you have. So it's a very large ball compar comparatively. Mm -hmm. And so the amount of force it takes to push this ball out of the socket is much higher. 
And I would guess if you've got uh, the, the, the metal on metal, it would last infinitely longer, right? And very good. There's no plastic to wear out. Right. So those were the two main issues was the size of the ball and the fact that there's no plastic. What about the, I'm sorry to interrupt you, what about the recovery time, uh, replacement versus resurfacing? Our data so far has shown that the hip resurfacing, since it's less invasive on the bone, actually has a little faster recovery. I think it's the bone destruction that adds to the procedure, not okay. so much the size of the incision. So it's a little bigger incision because you have to have the ball out of the way but you're saving more of the bone. So the patients don't seem to be in quite as much pain, but it's still an inpatient procedure. You're still in the hospital for about three days. Yeah. And it's logical that if you're an athlete that you're gonna put a lot more pressure on your joints and, and your hip being one of those. Um, can this allow somebody who has been very active to get back out and participate in athletics? Well, that was one of the things that very much intrigued me about it was the fact that a lot of my hip replacement patients, if I did perform the procedure when they were younger, they seemed to wear issues, they had the dislocation issues, and so I had this cadre of patients that were very interested in hip resurfacing, and so uh, uh, we, we started doing this in 2006, and it's been very successful in that high demand, younger patient, maybe 50, 45, who, is, who have been considered way too young for a standard hip replacement. We can now do this operation and, and allow them to return to activities like running. We're completely out of time, but please mention what you mentioned about the pain in the groin and uh, people and coming in indicator. and not thinking that they need. Well, the classic indicator for hip pain is actually pain in the groin, right in the front of your, uh, where the leg would meet with the crease of your abdomen. Okay. Um, typically, it's a, almost a C kind of a configuration, uh -huh. but pain right here in your SI joint, your sacroiliac joint, is actually usually low back pain. Okay. So if you're experiencing the back pain, then that not, is not necessarily indicative of a problem like this. This would be more, if you're experiencing it usually here. in the front okay interesting well if you'd like to learn more about the latest advances in patient care and medical research visit florida medical clinic online at floridamedicalclinic.com while you're there you can locate the office nearest you learn about their doctors and even request an appointment with our good friend rats here so good to, <laughs> good to have you on board <laughs> thank you very much thank All you right. doctor. when we come back we're going to tell you why it's important to have aggressive legal representation when you're involved in an accident don't go away studio 10 will return after this this segment was sponsored by Florida Medical Clinic.